What's up YouTube? This is OG Luop coming at you with another review. Now, today we will be taking a 10,000 mile review on my Tesla Model 3. Uh, I have some videos that I have popping up here for you guys. So I'll be showing you guys a little, a few things like cost of electricity, cost of maintenance, the total cost of ownership for the vehicle that I've had over the last almost 12,000 miles now. Now I meant to do this video at 10,000 miles, but it's been kind of busy so we're gonna hop right into this some other things i'll add in here i jotted them down here is so accessibility to electricity convenience and inconvenience autopilot opinions and uh just owning uh, an electric vehicle without a garage and also if i had to make a change in my vehicle what would i do so we're going to go ahead and jump right into this let's get it fellas. i would actually take a driving class so i wouldn't have this rim okay i'm just playing but let's really jump into this review we'll talk about the good the bad and the ugly we'll jump right into it now as you guys remember my old car i'm coming from a mercedes-benz roaster so we're right now i'll compare the two cars a little bit in this video like the difference is like coming from Mercedes to going to Tesla, like this car right here has been one of the most like as far as like convenience features just for everyday driving, everyday uses. It's been just a very convenient car to have. Like right now we're an autopilot. And you guys can see I, I stay on the road. I did eleven thousand miles in what three or four months. Like uh I stay driving a lot and that's just a very convenient feature for me to have in this vehicle. That's probably my favorite feature. Of course, there's um, just the general tech, the infotainment center, which we'll get into that I absolutely love. But this car is just made driving easier. It's made it more enjoyable. It makes you want to stay on the road more. It makes you want to take more road trips like with friends and family. It's been a great car to have. So that's probably my absolute favorite thing about this car is the autopilot. We'll just get that out of the way because everybody talks about the autopilot. Everyone loves the autopilot. Now this is not the full self-drive version of the car. I did not pay for that upgrade. This is just your standard autopilot with convenience features I believe. But as I'm shooting this video, I'm shooting this straight out of my iPhone. I believe it's an XX, XS Max. Um, and I don't have uh, my mic attached to it. I don't have anything attached to the iPhone. So you guys can probably hear some of the road noise through the phone on here. That is one thing you see a lot of people complain about with uh, Tesla is the road noise from bad sales or whatever uh, they attribute that cause to. It hasn't really affected me because the sound system in this car is amazing when I'm playing music. Usually I have the sound system on so I don't ever hear any road noise on the vehicle. But that's one thing uh, a lot of people will say is bad. Another thing is the, the wait time at the supercharger station. Now you guys might have seen my previous video. I live in an apartment. I don't have any fast charging at that apartment. The only semi-fast charger I have is down the street at the hotel, and that charger um, charges about 36 miles per hour, so it takes about uh, four to five hours to get the car to a good charge if I'm down low, like around that 20% mark, which isn't bad. I'm okay with that. Like, I just plug the car up down there if I need uh, to have it charged in like three or four hours, or Usually I just uh, plug it up in my parking garage and let it charge overnight and that will give me about, um, overnight it gives you about 80 to 100 miles of charge just with the standard plugging it in like you'll plug up anything else. So that's very good for me. That's what I typically use. Let me take this exit right here. We'll jump right into the next uh, segment. Okay, of guys, so right here I'll show you this is just my NEMA 5 to 15 adapter and we just plugged it in right here to a normal plug outlet in my garage. I'm going to come in here, open that, plug it right in. It's as simple as that. That's how simple it is to charge it. Now that adapter is super slow as you guys will see. It'll probably, my car's doing like 77%. I have it set to stop charging at 90%. As you guys can see, it's still four hours and 50 minutes for just that 13% charge with that adapter. So usually I'll plug it in here overnight if that. But what I want to show you guys here is how much I've spent in all supercharging. So we're going to pull that up and I'm going to show you guys just a little bit about how much uh, it costs to charge a Tesla, how much it costs to own a Tesla over 10,000 miles. Okay, we will begin with the cost of maintenance for owning my 
uh, Model 3 over 11,000 miles. Now, when I originally got the car, there was an issue with the uh, tail light, and that was the only issue I've had with the car that's required maintenance. The tail light seal was allowing moisture through, so you can see it in these pictures that I'm providing right here. It was allowing moisture through, so I went to the Tesla app. I scheduled a service appointment, and I sent them pictures of the issue. We talked over two days, and they came out to my house within a week. Now, my car was parked in the parking garage. I didn't even have to come outside. The technician came, replaced my tail light, and it was absolutely free of charge under warranty. Now, and I can see this is a small nuance of having that moisture in, but it's an issue nonetheless, and you wouldn't really want to have that issue with a vehicle. Again, people are purchasing these vehicles at forty to $60,000, which that issue you don't want on a car of that price. But it was free of charge to fix, and it was a fairly quick fix. Our next topic will be the accessibility to electricity. Now, I live in rural Virginia, Lynchburg, Virginia to be exact. We have one V3 supercharger. We have three destination chargers. And remember that you can plug up a Tesla to any uh, regular outlet with your NEMA 515 cable and connector. Now, the three destination chargers, two of them are at hotels, which in my case, I was able to speak to the hotel manager and they allow me to charge there for free as long as they don't have a lot of consumers currently staying at the hotel who own Teslas and need the charging for their trips. Now, one of the destination chargers that does charge you, I believe it's 36 cent per kilowatt hour. So a full charge would cost you about eight to ten dollars. And that is stationed at the local uh, university. Now, and I do use the supercharger if I'm about to go on a trip and I need to charge within 25 to 35 minutes to get to full. I have used the supercharger here locally. Now, if I could go back in time and change anything about my purchase when I was selecting a new vehicle, I would still go with Tesla, but I purchased the Standard Range Plus uh, to get my feet wet, to get my intro into Tesla. Now that I love the brand, I've had such good experiences with the brand, if I had the chance to redo it all, I would have went ahead and opted for the performance version of my vehicle. Now that is about an additional $10,000, but what you get is you have a vehicle that's pushing supercar territory with a 0 to 60 mile per hour at th uh, 0 to 60 at 3.2 seconds. The range is between 299 miles and 320 miles, depending on if you get the stealth mode or if you get it with the performance wheels and performance spoiler. It's a great vehicle, top speed, 162 miles per hour. And it's, again, $10,000 is a large chunk, but you drive this car every day. You have fun in this car every day. The car serves you very well. And to me, I think that additional $10,000 is worth what you get out of it. Okay, so what we are looking at right here is a total list of all the times I've supercharged since I purchased my vehicle on April 15th of 2020. Now, taking a look at this list, you guys can see I've supercharged a fair amount of time considering, uh, if you look right here, when I initially got my vehicle, the only charging I did was supercharging before I found other resources. Now, you guys can see the total amount it's cost every time I supercharge. You guys see the different states and different places that I have traveled to and utilized the supercharger at those locations. Now, for my specific case, I park in a parking garage because I live in an apartment. Now, the parking management team out here allows me to charge for free in the garage, as you guys saw with my NEMA 515 charger. So that's absolutely free other than the $25 a month I pay for my slot in the garage. Now, there is a hotel down the street, as I mentioned in a previous video, which I'll put a link up to, which has a faster charger. They have a Generation 2 charger, and they allow me to use their charger, and that is absolutely free of charge. So if you add up these numbers, you get the total of $200. $55, which I spent on the last 11,612 miles that I've driven my vehicle. Now, that's very good considering you spend about $50 per week, or I spent about $50 per week with my Mercedes-Benz Roadster that I previously owned before switching over to Tesla. So that's a good amount of money saved a month right there. So you guys can just take a look at this, and this will give you an idea of how much
much it costs to own a Tesla. Now, and every time I've used a supercharger, it's been out of convenience rather than necessity. There have been several destination chargers that I possibly could have used, utilized to have free charging. Now, and that does take several hours compared to a 5 to 35 minute charge at the supercharger, so it's much more convenient that way to pay that fee per kilowatt hour for supercharging. But it would be possible to own a Tesla with zero expenses considering there's no engine, there's no oil changes, there's very few maintenance that you'll need to be done and most of that will be covered under your warranty as I explained earlier in the video. So it is quite possible in my opinion and for my current situation to go 10,000 plus miles with zero expenses.